Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we began looking at chapter five, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we said the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to us in, um, you know, three ways. We hear the Holy Spirit speak to us. One is the inner voice, uh, where we don't hear the sound, okay, but the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us. We can hear statements but we can't hear the voice or the sound of the Holy Spirit. Then there's the audible voice of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit clearly speaks. Uh, and in, we see it in the case of Samuel, uh, when he hear the audible voice of God, in the case of prophets, when they hear the audible voice of God. And also, the, I said that the audible voice of God is a very rare experience. Okay, but the inner voice, the Holy Spirit speaks to us, the inner voice, that is not a rare experience. We are constantly hearing and from the Holy Spirit uh, bearing inner witness or speaking to our inner being, our inner spirit man. Okay, and then there is a voice of the Holy Spirit, the third way the Holy Spirit, we can hear the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit speaks to us is through the voice of um, um, the Holy Spirit in prophecy. I'm not going to be explaining it now because we will be looking at it in chapter 8 and then I will explain in detail. And then uh, another way the Holy Spirit speaks to us is, uh, you know, uh, you know, he speaks to a group of people. Now this is uh, answering Lucy's question as well. So, you know, while his voice could have come through the voice of prophecy, uh, you know, when we are to the, uh, sorry, to the collective, um, you know, um, a voice of the Holy Spirit that people hear in a group, a group of people, all of them sense or hear the Holy Spirit speaking the same thing to everybody. Okay. So it's a collective um, way that the Holy Spirit speaks to everybody in a group. It can be a team, it can be a leadership team, it can be a pastoral uh, uh, team where in the church there are many pastors. All the pastors sense the same leading of the Holy Spirit. It can also be in a, in a team meeting, leadership meeting, high level leadership meeting, whatever. All of them can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And this leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking the same thing to everybody in the team, in the group or in the family whether it's husband and wife, it can come to the voice of prophecy, it can come to the inner voice, it, come, it can come even to the inner witness. But what is important is the same direction, the same guidance, the same thing where the Holy Spirit is communicating to you, he will communicate to your spouse. Now suppose uh, as, as husband and wife you're praying something for your family or for your children, or, you know, as husband, wife, and children, you're praying about something for you as a family, then the Holy Spirit can speak the same thing for all of you, okay? And you, it's a confirmation. So, for example, when we were building our own uh, house, we, um, um, we were looking for a name for the house. So everybody was thinking, what is the name for the house? And then um, when I was praying, I got a specific name to name out building of our house. So when I told this and I explained why I got this name, everybody in my family were one because it was the Holy Spirit confirming to all of them that this is the name that we need to give to our home. Otherwise we will have, we are um, six of us in our family and all six of us are very strong in our opinions. Uh, in what we have to say, we will. somebody will disagree about something, but here we saw everybody just falling in line. So I heard from the Holy Spirit. I told it to them. The Holy Spirit confirmed it to them, and everybody were in it for what we were going to name our house. So uh, this can, you know, be like a collective witness what the Holy Spirit is speaking. And, uh, you know, uh, it also gives confidence to others that, hey, all of us are in unity and oneness. We are hearing from um, God. Okay. So in some cases, the Holy Spirit can speak to one individual. That one individual is presenting it. But when the individual is presenting it, the Holy Spirit gives a confirmation in the spirit man of others. So, for example, in a church where there is a pastoral team or a leadership team. Okay. In many of our mainline churches, they have something called a pastoral committee 
pastor's committee or you know so when the pastor presents something that he hears from god and when he's speaking it you know the holy spirit is just confirming it for everybody and everybody are saying yes and aligning to it so it is the holy spirit speaking collectively to everyone okay and the whole team agrees on something they move forward it uh, with it and you know it is good to have this and it helps ministry teams leadership teams and also the local churches to work in one accord i'll just give you two examples one example is in acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 3 where um five leaders in the early church were fasting and praying and they were ministering to the Lord and the Lord laid upon them or the Holy Spirit spoke to them and gave them a specific leading and a direction or an instruction that they had to follow and they acted upon that instruction what was the instruction the instruction was to set aside Silas and Barnabas for the work of the Lord and all of these five people were so much in unity and oneness that as soon as they finished their fasting and praying and ministering to the Lord, they all agreed and they set apart uh, Paul and Barnabas for the work of the Lord. Okay, There was no doubt. There was nobody saying, hey, I don't think Paul has to go. I don't think Barnabas has to go. Paul, uh, Paul is good, but Barnabas shouldn't go. But there was unity because... They were praying the Holy Spirit would have attested, confirmed it, and all of them acted on what the Holy Spirit was leading them and guiding them to do. Acts chapter 15 verse 28 is another example where we see the first council in Jerusalem. And there we see in that council in Jerusalem, you know, Paul and Barnabas, they came together and they were discussing and asking the elders or the leaders in the church at Jerusalem, that is the early apostles who were leaders, whether the Gentiles should also follow the Jewish traditions. Now the Jews were becoming Christians, they were coming to the church and they were telling that the Gentiles also have to be circumcised, they have to eat certain kind of food, they have to follow certain kind of rituals. So Paul and Barnabas were saying that it's not needed. Now, what is important? You are being justified or being made righteous by your faith in Christ Jesus. And it's no longer the law that is making you righteous. So the Gentiles don't have to follow all these rituals. So when they presented this, something that was a big debate, something that was very strong in the minds of these Jewish apostles, when they presented that, it says that, you know, in the end, they all issued a statement saying that this is a good thing to do uh, and the Holy, uh, the, it's a good thing what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do and we also agree to what the Holy Spirit is telling us. So they issued their statement as being good to the Holy Spirit and to us, which means that when Paul and Barnabas were speaking about this very important thing, which can become such a big controversy, such a big problem in the early church, the Holy Spirit was speaking to all the apostles and saying, don't let the Gentiles follow Jewish customs and laws. It's not necessary. So in the end, they all made a statement saying, hey, the Gentiles don't have to be circumcised. They don't have to follow the traditions of the Jews. They're free from all of these, but they have to order follow the order of the church okay so there was a collective decision that was made because of the inner witness of the holy spirit in each one of the leaders who were there at the first council in jerusalem okay are you able to understand yes okay so uh, even as we hear the voice of the holy spirit it is very exciting okay that we can hear the voice of the holy spirit but we need to be very very cautious careful in this area because sometimes satan and his demons are also deceivers they can deceive you easily they are good imitators they can imitate the voice of god and they can make it sound like as if god is telling you so they can pretend to speak as though god is speaking to us and lead us astray but we must test it so how do we test it we just don't go with our emotions we have to see the facts 
okay see the facts see the actuals see the reality see in our own eyes experience see things and what we are seeing what we are experiencing what is the reality what is the facts that we need to take in, into account rather than our emotions so how do we test if it is the holy spirit that is really speaking to us is a voice of the holy spirit i've already explained in the previous last chapter i've just explained to you i've outlined uh, it was outlined for us in the earlier chapter about the inner witness of the holy spirit how we need to test it so the same thing holds good here as um, well but as the holy spirit speaks we must listen and we must also be aware that the enemy tries to imitate the spirit of god and lead people astray so sometimes the, whole, the satan can speak exactly like the holy spirit we can make it so sure like the holy spirit so that time you need to confirm it with the word of god spend more time in praying speaking in tongues waiting upon god to receive various different kinds of confirmation okay so lucy says my daughter was so happy when you told me that we will see the next chapter over it okay so did it help lucy did it help answer your question okay thank you any questions on the voice of the holy spirit now pastor has given quite a lot of examples about the inner voice of the holy spirit i think he's given almost one two three four examples his own personal life examples i'm not going to look at it because all of you like stories you will surely go and read it rather than reading your notes you will read these stories so i'm leaving it to you and i don't have the time because i have to finish uh, one and a half books okay and we are rushing against time so i'm not going to um, look into that you can read pastor's life example and it will give you more clarity on how you can um, discern the inner witness of the holy spirit and the voice of the holy spirit any questions on this chapter okay no questions then we will um, chapter 6 is the gifts of the holy spirit now um, i'm not going to do this chapter the gifts of the holy spirit because uh, pastor jay kumar isaiah is teaching you about the holy spirit right and i confirmed with him he said he will be teaching on the gifts of the holy spirit so i'm not going to repeat it here because it will be a repetition he will teach you on the gifts of the holy spirit okay we will move on to chapter 7 where we will talk about very interesting things about dreams and visions okay so even as we're talking about dreams and visions i don't want you to dream now please uh, you please listen and you can dream later and then you can discern and understand what your dreams are okay so we will look at chapter 7 okay in acts chapter 2 verses 17 and 18 which is a very familiar verse we all of us know it i think we all all of us know it by heart as well okay in the last days the spirit will the holy spirit will pour himself out on all flesh and it says young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams okay so dreams visions and prophecies are a hallmark of the move of the holy spirit that means we know that the holy spirit is moving in these days even in the last days there is an increased level of dreams and visions and and this is the hallmark or the hallmark of the move of the holy spirit and hence we need to be open to dreams and visions okay some of you receive more dreams and visions than some of us okay uh but it's good god is speaking to you through your dreams and visions and we need to be open to them okay now dreams have three different sources so what are your the different sources of the dreams it can be dreams can come because our mind is preoccupied with something okay maybe your mind is thinking about something and that you dream because it is stored in your subconscious mind you're dreaming about it but don't think that it is from god okay maybe you are or you love food and now you are in a hostel and uh, you're missing your home food you know and so and you dream about your home food it's not about it's not god giving you the dream but something that you are pre occupied with or maybe you are in love with somebody okay so much in love that all your dreams are about that person it's not about god confirming that 
this is the person in your dreams is because your mind is so preoccupied with uh, with with that okay so firstly the source of our dream can be something that we are preoccupied with secondly our dreams uh, it can be also the source can be god where god is speaking to us and the third thing can also dreams can be through demonic interference so demons and satan can also interfere in our dreams and put um, dreams or bad thoughts in our or bad dreams in our mind so when when we have these bad dreams these demonic dreams what do we do with them don't worry about them just reject them don't permit those dreams to affect you don't believe in it don't let it cause any kind of fear okay those dreams that satan puts is for you to think about it be fearful you know uh, so constantly thinking about it your mind is so engaged that you're not concentrating on god what he's telling you what he's guiding you to do so what is the best thing to do is reject it don't permit those dreams to affect you don't believe in in them and don't let it cause any fear in your heart okay um so there are dreams that god actually puts in your heart those dreams you need to pay attention to okay now uh, does god speak to us through our dreams yes there are some scriptures that say psalm chapter 16 verse 7 it says that god instructs us in the night seasons he counsels us in the night seasons night seasons means that uh, that in the night god speaks to our heart he's giving us instructions in the night and how does he do it through dreams okay job chapter 33 verses 14 and 18 uh, can somebody read that please job chapter 33 verses 14 and 18 for god may speak in one way or in another yet man does not perceive it in a dream in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds then he opens the ears of men and seals the instruction in order to turn men from his stead and conceal pride from men he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword amen thank you so here in this verse we learn that god speaks through dreams and when he speaks to dreams what is he basically doing he is instructing us and he is keeping us from getting into wrong things and he is correcting us so if you look at this verse there are so many things he keeps back his soul from the pit conceals pride from man in order to turn man from his deed okay so all these things that god gives us in our dreams is to instruct us to keep us from getting into wrong things bad things correcting us and um, you know warning us ahead of um time so what are dreams so dreams are some things that we see in the night when you're asleep you may see one picture you might see one word or you can see a motion film like a short film you know like a short advertisement sometimes it can be a little more longer than an advertisement in the motion film and you see things happening in your dream okay now there are many different reasons why god uses dreams to speak to us the first thing that god uses dreams to speak to us is to meet us and to encounter us okay so god can use dreams to just meet us at the point of our need or to encounter us for example jacob right um jacob in um, in um, genesis chapter 28 was 12 where god you know encounters him and meets with him and tells him i will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying so he meets with jacob encounters with him and he gives him tells him something that is for his future okay so god meets with him in his dream and how does he know that this is god who's speaking to him or sometimes when god meets with us and encounters us with, with in our dreams how do we know it is god because when we wake up you know we know that we can sense that yeah it is real god has spoken to us and also something that we we can sense that it is god really speaking to our dream was we can sense the presence of god the presence of god so overwhelms us 
it's not like a depressing thing it's not like a saddening thing it's not like a fearful thing that we have then we know it is from the devil but when we know that it was god who encountered us and met us and spoke to us in our dream you know we can sense the the presence of god just overwhelms us we know for sure a full knowledge within that yes this is god his presence is so overwhelming so good so when when jacob woke up he knew that he had met with god and he you know he puts that stone there and he pours oil and he calls it a, 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 you know gives a specific name because he knows that yes when he woke up he was sure that it was god's presence that he had encountered the second thing um god uh, re the reason why god speaks to us in dreams is to encourage us okay uh, in acts chapter 18 we see that paul is being persecuted whenever he goes to synagogues and preaches the jews are persecuting him but paul does not stop preaching the gospel he doesn't stop preaching the gospel and then when there's so much of persecution you know jesus appears to him in the dream in the night and tells paul don't be afraid i am with you so it is just encouraging paul you know paul go ahead preach teach you know don't be afraid of the persecutions that are coming or you've already faced because i am with you so god uses dreams to encourage us the third thing is he uses dreams to instruct and uh, teach us he instructs us what we need to do what choices we need to make for example mary and joseph now joseph gets a dream okay uh, when joseph hears that um, mary has conceived you know the holy spirit speaks to him because joseph was very embarrassed about the situation and he quietly had in his mind to put away mary not to marry her but we see that god speaks to him in the dream and tells joseph not to be afraid to take mary as his wife so here we see through a dream the holy spirit or god is instructing and teaching joseph what to do the fourth thing that god does through dreams is he directs and guides us the same example we can use of mary and joseph now you know um um we see that the angel of the god of the lord comes to joseph in a dream and tells joseph to take mary and the baby jesus and to go away to egypt okay and so they go away to egypt to you know overcome the problem that is there and after some time whenever in egypt uh, in a dream again god tells joseph to go back to judea okay so here is direction and guiding through dreams okay uh, and the same way god can even direct us instruct us teach us uh, guide us and lead us in dreams even today okay the fifth thing is god also reveals future events through dreams okay now for example uh, you know jacob was working very hard for his father in law laban and god knew that laban is going to uh, to cheat jacob so in a dream you know jacob is seeing the male uh, uh, sheep you know mating with the the striped or the streaked uh, sheep and so god is actually telling him hey laban is going to teach, cheat you in the future so i am going to increase your livestock because you have been faithful in uh, in serving him so this is what i want you to do okay so god is revealing future events even in the case of joseph you know joseph's dream is revealing him to him to him in the future that he is going to be in a place of position where his brothers are going to come and bow down and even his father and mother okay the sixth one is um god can even correct us and realign our choices our will our plans and our purpose according to his will plan and purpose for our lives for example king abimelech when he when uh, when moses and sarah go to that place the king sees sarah and she's so beautiful and wants to take her as his wife and moses is scared because he thinks that if the king takes sarah as his wife he will kill moses so moses tells sarah tell the king that i am not your husband but i am your brother okay but then uh, sorry so huh 
Abraham, sorry, Abraham. Yeah. So uh, God tells um, uh, the, the king, you know, um, and warns him in a dream that, hey, you know, um, the, the person that you've taken is somebody else's wife, is Abraham's wife. And then the king is all alarmed and he says, I never knew because, you know, Abraham told me that he was his, her brother. Okay. So God alerts us and warns us through dreams. Um, sorry, he corrects us and realigns us through dreams. This is uh, the story of Ahibelic. Uh, the seventh one is God also alerts us and warns us through the dreams okay the wise men when they found the baby jesus they were wanting to go back and tell herod but god in a dream tells them to go another way okay we also see um uh, you know joseph going to egypt you know uh, mary and uh, uh, joseph god telling joseph don't take mary and the baby jesus and go to egypt so there is another alert and a warning okay so god alerts us and warns us through dreams it does not mean that god is going to say everything that will happen he will just alert you so that he can prevent you from going through any unnecessary problems and difficulties okay so these are some different seven ways why god you know speaks to us through dreams or why he is giving us dreams okay now how do you know that a dream is from god and not from demonic interference i already said that when you wake up you can just know that it was god you can just feel the overwhelming presence of god you can just know in your spirit man your entire being that it was god if it was demonic beings you can feel a sense of uneasiness, tightness, you know, fear and all of those things. But if it was God, you can just know, you can feel, you, you just feel the overwhelming presence of God. And it was, it will not, uh, you would know also it was God speaking to you. It was not demonic sun because it's not a nightmare. It's not scaring you or terrifying you. And also you would know that it is not your own subconscious mind that was speaking to you or the own activity in your mind okay um okay so that is um dreams we need to be open to uh, receiving dreams from god okay now the next thing that god speaks to us is also through uh visions okay um but if you note in some of these passages which have been um, listed down here for us in dreams, in some cases it says that the person saw a vision at night or visions of the night, which means that it could be a dream in which they saw a vision or they saw a vision uh, during the night time. Okay, so anything it could be. So some of the times where in these verses you will read it as not just dreams but visions. So you can just know that it was a vision that they saw during uh, the night time. Okay. Now when you get vision, dreams, what you need to do about it is you need to write it down. If you know it is from God, write it down. If you're not able to understand, just write it down. Sometimes God can fulfill those dreams later on and you can go back and read and you can see, hey, God spoke to me to this dream and it is fulfilled okay uh, there are times uh, you know when when the dreams are very simple we can understand it very clearly sometimes in some of our dreams can be very figurative there are figures there are symbols there are colors so what you need to do is you can go back to the word of god you can look at various people who had dreams study it various symbols in the bible various colors what is it talking about and also you can go to people who are um, good at interpreting dreams and you know you can get a, a, a explanation for the meaning of your dream but more important it's god who's given you the dream it's the holy spirit who's given you the dream so the best thing for you to do is ask the holy spirit say god you've given me this dream you know it's for a plan and a purpose and a reason what are you telling me please explain to me so god will explain but you need to be open sensitive keep waiting on god till you receive an answer from him okay so that is dreams 
God also speaks through us through visions. Okay, so visions are also something the Holy Spirit is doing uh, uh, in our own time. Uh, that is what we read in um, uh, we read in Acts chapter two. Okay, Acts chapter two, verses seventeen and eighteen. That um, your old men shall dream dreams, but your young men shall see visions. So even in the times that we are living in, God speaks through us through visions. Now, what is the difference between vision and dreams now in the vision uh, in a dream you are asleep okay but in a vision you are awake you are awake okay but in a dream you are asleep but in both visions and dream god is showing you something he's speaking uh, to you something there could be a single picture there could be a sequence of even events there can be uh, like a motion picture that is happening and all that is um, God is speaking to you when he's intercepting what you are seeing with visuals that he is giving you and that is a vision okay so vision is when God is intercepting your thoughts in your mind or intercepting your imagination in your mind and you're seeing some things with visuals it will be pictures okay visually you're seeing something and that is a vision and god can give us visions to guide us and direct us okay now there are different kinds of visions that we see in uh, scripture and we can categorize it as a spiritual vision now, what is a spiritual vision? A spiritual vision is when you're awake and God puts pictures across your mind or a sequence of events um, uh, in your mind. Or when you're praying, you know, God can flash something in your um, mind. And through your mind, you're seeing these things. And this is a spiritual vision okay so it is all intercepting your imagination your thoughts it's projected on your imagination and it is coming out of your spirit but you're seeing it in your imagination so your imagination is like a screen on which god is projecting a movie or a picture what he is directing you leading you showing you or communicating to you through that vision now um a uh, spiritual vision, for example, can be Ananias and Saul. Okay, God directed Ananias and Saul. Acts chapter ten was no, Acts chapter nine verses ten and twelve. Um, God directed Ananias to go to Saul in a vision. Now Saul has encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. He's in Damascus, is blind. So God directs Ananias through a spiritual vision, and so you know God reveals to uh, Saul. To him telling him where he needs to go he needs to go to straight street on straight street he will meet somebody called saul of tarsus who is praying and um, and also saw uh, saul in a vision he sees ananias coming to him okay so both these people are seeing a vision where god is telling ananias go to straight street meet saul saul is also seeing somebody coming and meeting him so it is a spiritual vision that they are seeing they're not sleeping but they're able to see where god is intercepting their imaginations their thoughts and they are receiving it in their spirit man okay another example is in acts chapter 16 verses 9 and 10 paul sees a vision in the night where a man of macedonia is standing before him and pleading to him and telling him please come into macedonia and help us so immediately after seeing this vision you know paul knows that it is god speaking to him and he is preparing himself to go to macedonia and preach the gospel okay so that is spiritual vision another kind of vision is a trance a trance is um you know um when a person is not conscious of his physical circumstances, he's suddenly disconnected from this world and then he's seeing a vision. It's something like a temporary thing. Now, a, a good example of this is in Acts chapter 10, verses 9 to 16, where, you know, Peter is very, very hungry. There's no food, so food is being cooked. He goes up to the terrace and um, he is... Um, 
praying and then he sees something, he sees a trance. It's not a dream, he's not seeing a vision, but he sees a trance, which means he is not conscious of his physical circumstances, his physical surroundings, he's totally disconnected from this world, okay? And then he's seeing a vision, it's a very temporary thing, and he sees a white sheet coming down from heaven and on that is all clean and unclean animals and God is telling him, get up and kill and eat, okay? Now this does not happen, trans does not happen only in the Old Testament, sorry, in the New Testament in the early church, it happens even today. Well, I, I, I read, you know, when I was, um, um, when I was teaching the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I read about this, you know, a man of God goes to a, a specific place and he's preaching the gospel there. So three or four days meeting. And there was this young girl who was down with cancer and she was just skin and bones. You know, you just can't see anything in her body, just skin and bones. So they brought her two days for prayer, nothing happened. The third day when they brought her, this man of God was praying. Suddenly he felt he was disconnected from his whole surroundings. The whole surroundings became, you know, dark and blurred. He just felt himself rising up with this girl. And then he sees something like a s evil thing, a small, dark, evil thing, you know, just holding on to that. There was a tumor in this girl's body, holding on to that tumor. And um, it was just a temporary thing. They just see themselves in you know, somewhere in space like this outside, not in their normal surroundings standing. So they're not conscious of the surroundings. And then he knows that this is from the devil. He rebukes the devil and he breaks the bondage in the stronghold. And that evil thing just falls to the ground. And then suddenly he feels he's come back to the ground and he sees that girl there and he's standing there. And he sees this evil thing just running down the aisle. And the evil thing says, can I stay here? And he says, no, you have to leave this place right now in the name of Jesus. And that evil thing like, you know, squeaks like a puppy. When a puppy is beaten, you know how, what kind of noise it makes. It makes that noise and it runs away. And after that, this girl, you know, goes to, uh, is restored, strengthened, and it goes to the hospital. There's no tumor. There's no, absolutely no cancer in her body. So this is a trance that this person experience so uh, there are times when god also takes us through a trance where he shows us things um so that we can understand what he is uh, doing okay so uh, we see that even in this trance that that uh, peter had there was an open vision okay so it's a combination um of an trance and an open vision because he's seeing the heaven open and you know the you know uh, uh, um, seeing into the spiritual realm, you know, so uh, he's able to see the white sheet coming down. So he's able to clearly see in the spiritual realm. So sometimes in a trance, you also have an open vision. And open vision is basically when you are able to see into the spiritual realm. So there is no picture or canvas that is happening in your imagination. There are no the thoughts or movie that's happening in your imagination like it happens in a spiritual vision or in just in a vision or in a dream but in an open vision you're actually seeing into the spiritual realm you're seeing into the realm of the spirit and that is what the bible calls as an open vision now for some examples of open vision is uh, you know when um, peter james and john was saw Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. You know, transfiguration that happened, that was something called an open vision where they see directly into the spirit realm. Also, we see that, um, you know, I, um, um, uh, that, you know, this, this, um, uh, this Mount of Transfiguration was a place where they were not seeing a vision. It was not a spiritual vision, it was not a trance, but it was an open heaven, uh, sorry, open vision where they saw directly into the spirit realm, okay? The third thing is um, traveling in, uh, uh, sorry, the fourth thing is traveling in visions. You know, sometimes when God is giving you a vision, um, whether it's a spiritual vision or whether it's an open vision, you're moving into a certain place or you find yourself going into somebody else's home, or sometimes you find yourself on a mountaintop where somebody is there, you know, jumping off the, going, going to jump off the cliff to suicide, 
or you know standing at a high point where they're going to suicide or standing at a you know um, um, rock where they're going to jump into a waterfall so you're able to actually travel in your vision and go to that place exactly and you're able to um, uh, see what is happening in that place but physically you are here but in your vision god is taking you to a certain place okay now for example uh, um, again when i was researching about the gifts of the holy spirit i read about this man of god who was just finished preaching and god told him to pray in the spirit so when he was praying in the spirit he was praying not in gibberish language but he was praying in an in a language of one of the tribal languages okay and there was a mother who was sitting there and her daughter is a missionary in this tribal place where this was the language where the, this pastor was uh, speaking and he was actually this uh, this lady her daughter was going to die any moment she had heard news but they couldn't bring her to the town or anything because this was a tribal village it was very far off so this god led this pastor to pray in tongues he was praying in tongues but as he was praying in tongues he was actually praying in the language that this 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 uh, lady's daughter was ministering in that place this lady knew the tribal language and she, this man was saying don't worry god has healed your daughter and she has been restored and he's telling her in in when he was speaking in those tongues he was actually he's gone to the tribal village he's been transported in this vision he's gone there he's explaining everything how the room is where she is how she looks how she's sitting up everything so when the person the mother hears it she is so encouraged so what is happening here is this pastor is preaching please speaking in tongues but he was actually traveling in his vision he was able to um, go exactly and speak everything that was happening there and the mother knew for sure that her daughter has been healed and she comes and testifies and praises god now we also see ezekiel you know ezekiel to read the book of ezekiel he was transported from babylon he was transported to jerusalem and he sees everything so you know ezekiel experience was um, you know traveling in visions okay and the last thing is uh, you know being transported in the spirit okay so in the, when you transport in the in the spirit you know it means that the spirit is moving out with uh, within the natural realm or in the spiritual realm and you're traveling in places and god is showing you um, things for example paul was caught up in the third heaven okay john was caught up in heaven revelation chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 paul was caught up in the third uh, heaven second corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 and 3 so here you are actually being transported in the spirit which means that the person's spirit is moving out within the natural realm or in the spiritual realm and they're traveling to places and god is showing them things okay now um, spiritual vision is the most common which we all have we don't um, have not expo experienced transported in the spirit or you know open vision or traveling in visions or whatever um, but you know um, we need to we can ask god you know we that we like to have these experiences so even as god speaks to us through dreams and visions it's uh, good for you to you know ask god concentrate your minds even before you go to sleep say god there's so much of junk that goes into our mind so much of evil thoughts unnecessary thoughts say god i'm concentrating my mind to you even as i go to sleep sanctify my mind cleanse me so that i can receive dreams and visions from you okay so god speak to me through your visions and dreams and so we need to be open to the visions and dreams because god leads us directs us corrects us realigns us to his will plan and his purpose okay any questions on this chapter visions and dreams have a question yeah you can take the mic please
sometimes we are having a uh, bad dreams at night and from morning you are sensing that something is going bad is going to happen so this is from demonic or something god is revealing to us when i said when is god revealing to us yes it, if he's something that is he's warning us ahead of time it will not be something that will be scary or frightening see you can sense the presence of god you can sense the peace of god so god is basically saying prepare yourself don't go there don't do this just pray for safety and protection so what you need to do is you pray for safety and protection but if you're extremely fearful and you know all of those things you can it can be demonic interference yes, uh, you are seeing some accident accident yes so so even if it's uh, god is warning you about some accident there can be peace that hey i know about it is god spoken to me i'm going to pray about it maybe avoid going or you can just speak god's protection over so it in this situation we have to we, we should pray in tongues or yes you can i think it's a good thing to pray in tongues because you don't know what exactly to pray right so when you're praying you're praying in accordance to god's will it's the it's god who's putting the words in the holy spirit putting in your mouth the words in your mouth to pray exactly according to god's will yes how can we interpret shaker says how can we interpret the dreams and visions how to know the interpretation is right and wrong how to interpret dreams and visions is basically to look study the bible to see the different dreams and visions that people have um um there's another great man of god who who died recently john paul jackson who was a great um, um you know um was very good in interpreting dreams and visions you can go to the website you can get their books you can get um, you know his sermons and uh, his talks on dreams and visions he has a great wealth of knowledge with god has revealed to him about dreams and visions and then uh, you can interpret that also you can go to you can ask god you know and the holy spirit has given you that dream it doesn't mean that it's a mystery he wants you to know what he's trying to tell you to the dream so ask god to give you the interpretation yeah does that help shaker okay any other questions okay if there are no more questions we'll move to chapter 8 um prophecies okay uh sorry i did not give any names of the ministers who had the gifts of dreams um i didn't name them uh, i wouldn't want to name them as well but uh, just just giving that as an example oh you mean john paul jackson okay who interprets dreams yes john paul jackson but he no longer is uh, alive he passed away i think two years back or one year back so. okay. okay chapter 8 prophecies now what is a prophecy prophecy is actually a message from god inspired by the holy spirit so the holy spirit revealing a message from god do we see prophecies in the old and new testament yes or no do we see prophecies in the old and new testament yes do we see prophecies even today do we receive prophecies even today yes okay so what is prophecy prophecy is one of the gifts of the holy spirit nine gifts of the holy spirit uh and what is prophecy all about huh revealing god's will what is prophecy all about first corinthians chapter 14 verse 3 where does it say first corinthians chapter 14 verse 3 says prophecy is for edification exhortation and comfort it's not about you know uh, like a magic or you know Uh, astrology telling about your past or your present but prophecy is basically for edification what is edification encouraging building up a person exhortation means exhorting them to how to live you know encouraging them how to build them up and comforting people so prophecy is not about foretelling it, it has those ingredients foretelling and foretelling but it's basically about you know um exhortation edification and bringing comfort to people okay that is first corinthians chapter 14 verse 
And uh, should we despise prophecies? Should we disregard prophecies saying, no, I don't want prophecies and all that. I don't believe in prophecies. No, we shouldn't despise prophecies. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 and 21 says, do not despise prophecies, but test all things, hold fast to what is good. Okay, so don't despise prophecies. But when you receive prophecy, what should you do? You have to test it. Okay, you have to test it whether it is from God or from the devil or it's from the, the person himself just saying something for the sake of saying it. So you need to test it. How do you test it? The word of God, which is whether it's harmony with the scripture, whether it's glorifying Jesus Christ and also through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to confirm it through those eight methods, common ways that we saw through scripture and also whether it is glorifying God. Okay, we'll continue next week. We'll stop here. Anyone has any questions? Okay. No questions? Okay, there are no questions. Thank you all for joining class. Have a blessed weekend. I'll meet you next um, Friday. Thank you. Stop.